Hello and welcome back to Forgotten City and we have Equisha. We took Yeah Yeah Um We've been asking people about how they want up here, trying to find a pattern. Yes, 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 I know that please do not interrupt me. Some people mentioned a coin. I have a coin as well. But then most of us do tend to carry coins on our person, don't we? What else? Ancient River. Yes. What else? Memory Epsis. Uh, named Karen. Where's when your hoodie? It's not safe in there. An assassin just arrived in the bath. Uh, what? How could you know that? And why are you talking to me instead of doing something about it? I don't know what to do about it. Go and stop him and come back to me once when you're no longer in danger. I know the bath. The okay. I know. I know. I know. I know what to do. I know what to do. You don't go over there. It's gonna collapse. Yeah. Man, you... Uh, any of those who? I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I have to hide. Do not go in there. Why? Just trust me. All right. Um. Fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please be careful. Sure, sure, sure. Fine. Empty shrine. Empty the shrine. Shrine, the empty shrine, and then shrine, and empty shrine. Stop right there. The yes, so I'm worshipping in a small round shrine just inside the city. The second building on your left. Thank you for your service to the Empire. Oh, I'll let you live. For Thank now. you, but you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will it count as if I killed him? I really don't want to get close to him. Okay, that stone looked like it was pro. What's this? Big search, probably of the goddess to whom this temple is taking. Absolutely, a weak resident. Okay, but, uh, in a second, I have to get that blow first. Thank you. I want to notice. By order of Emperor Nero, all loyal sons of Rome are ordered to hunt and execute the arsonist and murderer Barius Quinctus Crispus, a citizen from Aventine district of Rome. He is about 40 to 50 years old. He is average height, average build and dark hair, and has one green eye and one blue. He is typically clean shaven. He is a known associate of cultists and suffers from delusions on grandeur. Hey, this. <laughs> oh, he is Quinkus. Wait. That's interesting. Are you with me now? How can I shoot? I would really like to know how can I draw my bow and shoot it. Also, God damn it, please. We don't. Also, where the. We... Huh? 
Where the hell are we? Was I supposed to find that now? And why do I have a feeling about this? Nope. Everything's fine. That's a very pretty place. Uh, guess I found something. Oh, hello. Ah, a visitor. Who are you? Why are you here? Welcome, welcome. Who are you? May I ask your name? I'm Efla. It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Who are you? Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? I found this place by accident. Then perhaps the fates brought you here. To learn the secrets of this place. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the golden rule? Not yet. Hmm. You have much to learn. It's best if you figure it out on your own. Come back once you've made progress. I would really like you to tell me. Then you should speak with your contemporaries in the city above. Ask them about their stories see if you detect a pattern of some sort. It is best if you come to this realization for yourself. You would never believe me if I told you. They are all dead. We're in the realm of the, uh, of the dead. We are in Hades. You are Iron. That's my guess. Only difference that he doesn't have. Wait, get me the circle. Yeah, I made a big circle. Oh. And so I would rather not swim in those in these waters. I guess there's that. It's just a giant circle. So that way we'll get the surface. Well, it would have been a good explanation as to why they all saw a strange person, Iron over there, and uh, they woke up with a coin to pay Chiron to get them to the, into the Hades, Hades, the god of death, <laughs> to the underworld. But none of them paid as to for the golden rule. I have no idea <laughs> how to connect those two things. I don't know how to connect them. And how did that assassin get in here? Oh. That is intriguing. It really? It really? Hey. Oh, this Persephone, perhaps? Or Korra? It was in one translation. Was when I read that, it was a mythos of Her Demeter and Korra. You want something for me? You there. 
I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you're carrying. Right. Now, I dare how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate's ban. But I'm impressed. And before you ask, no, I wouldn't dream of trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. Go on. Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? Yes. I just come to life and fire golden balls arrows at them. The statues come to life and fire golden balls arrows at them. Yeah. And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case, supposedly, Are you lucky? Of those arrows is enough to turn a full grown man into gold. Now, of course, that is a travesty, a terrible, horrible waste of human life, which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of a tale told by that Greek fella, Aesop, the goose that laid the golden egg. With the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. Use your imagination. Golden animals, insects, trees and plants. The Midas touch without the drawbacks. We are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interesting. I think the golden goose is meant to be a cautionary tale. Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Are you interested or not? That sounds grossly unethical. Oh, unethical. I'm not we use such a bow on people. There's no profit in breaking the golden rule. In that case, go on. Excellent. So the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan. But first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? Not really. No, I don't remember her. No problem. Allow me to explain. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, okay. and the underworld, depending on who you ask. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? A golden bow? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking you know what. But you want me to steal it? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'd all be dead within moments, I'm sure. No, here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft, exactly. It's more of a... a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions. Ask away. Are you alone, Thick? Why can't you do it yourself? I'm more of an ideas man. Whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete confidence in you. Isn't that extremely dangerous? When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? I only took him. Prometheus was also punished for eternity, if I recall correctly. Only because he was silly enough to get caught. Why can't I just take it? Because the gods would see you, of course. Hence, my proposal. <gasps> That's all. Are you in, partner? Oh, I will do it. The only action on horror elements for the crime. <laughs> Why? Why would you put it like this? Now I know it's gonna be horror. After it, but don't ever call me a partner. Wonderful. Now, if you'll hand over your bow, I can get started applying a layer of gold leaf. This is a quality weapon. Now, bear with me for a moment. And here we are. A gold leaf bow. Now, I've gone and unlocked the Shrine of Diana for you. So as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you. Hmm. I'm not stressed out at all. Now that I... You know what, actually? I'm gonna save. Really, I'm gonna save because now I'm stressed out because I know it's gonna be a horror part. 
Why is it? I don't like it. Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? I hate you, yes, I have. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me and I'll unlock it for you. You locked me in here. A little bit slow, aren't you? Yes, I locked you in. And until you give me my bow, you're gonna stay in there, like Tantalus in Tartarus. How is it not against the golden rule? You said you split the riches between the two of us. <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? Oh, I do love a good loophole. How can you... Let me out right now, or when I... Free... No, how can I trust you after you've double-crossed me like this? You're just gonna have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. And don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognize my own handiwork. Even if I gave it to you, you'd probably just leave me in here. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man, but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out how many it takes to kill a woman, shall we? I just put it back. Yes, what else something in here? I was trying so hard not to hit the nest. Was looking at me, that's why I didn't want anything from this. My beloved Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me, a rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. 
I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again. I found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strained whisper again, and turning back, I discovered that even though I had moved, I shouldn't have moved. Should have waited for her to finish. Because now we have to wait for game to load in. Yes, it was totally thought through process. She was still looking right into my soul. That was when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. From that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues are living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. No, you know what? No. Why can't I remove that? Let me guess. I can't remove that either. Only way for us to go is. She's dead. It was half eaten. <laughs> Size for relief, okay. We are relieving them. Oh my god, I missed. Ooh. Okay, so I'm technically not stealing? Okay. I was wondering whether I was just... ...being... Aided. You're not supposed to be. Oh, hello. Yes, I know. You're welcome. Not that way. You lied to me. Wait, oh, which way? Oh, down there, okay. Oh, 
Oh no. All I tried to do is get up to here. I'm sorry I have to kick you over. I've got all of them. Hehehe, <laughs> no way in hell. I know I just used up a bunch of arrows. Uh, it wasn't my intention to get to the chest. Really, what happened to you? Well, if it continues, I think I saw someone over there. Oh, I screwed it up. Did I? If I did. Imagine how good I am in Apex with those mad skills. We're on the other side now. We're cool. Cool, cool, cool. Oh god, freaking damn it. No, no, I'm saving. This is bloody. Okay, thank you. My beloved Galatea, after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, Ooh. I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what small mercies I could. I began to talk to them, to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I'd learned as a child. As the others became more concerned by my charity, I sought solitude from them, preferring the company of my tormented charges. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne, Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, discovered that his beloved Galatea had come to life. It was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Forgive me. I know that is not your real name, just one I have borrowed from a story. But when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisitely beautiful woman 
I have ever known. Your face forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. Our meeting gave me new purpose to free you from your golden prison so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. And that is gonna be it for today. So for now, thank you very much. Yep, I'm not following that for right now. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!